Are you experiencing Wi-Fi slowdowns? Did you know that one out of the most common reasons for Wi-Fi slowdowns are caused by other Wi-Fi routers in your area? In this video, I'll show you why this happened and how to protect your Wi-Fi router from unexpected slowdowns. There are 14 channels within the 2.4 router's Wi-Fi band. Each router would automatically connect to one of these channels to send and receive internet data to wireless devices on its local area network. The normal way to assign channels within the 2.4 GHz Wi-Fi router 100 MHz frequency band would be to assign them in a sequential order one after the other like we have it here and given each channel its own 20 megahertz frequency band. Unfortunately, this method does not allow all 14 channels to be assigned within this 100 megahertz of assigned bandwidth for the 2.4 Wi-Fi router. Only five channels can be assigned within this bandwidth because five times 20 megahertz equal the maximum frequency of 100 megahertz. Engineers were forced to make changes in this channel arrangement structure in order to get all 14 channels to fit within the 100 megahertz of available bandwidth space. Next we'll talk about how this was done and how it negatively impact the development of the 2.4 gigahertz Wi-Fi routers network, leading to the problem with Wi-Fi slowdowns as we experience on a regular basis today. Now here we're gonna talk about the changes that engineers came up with. Now, this is um, a router connected to a computer within a local area network. Um, this is just one channel. It has selected the very first channel and that channel is 20 megahertz. You're really not going to see any changes here. Everything worked fine. With channel 1, everything is pretty well the same as it was before. With just one channel connected, everything worked fine. Now we have two channels connected. What you'll notice here though is that channel 2 overlaps channel 1 not the way it was before where channel 2 was right after channel 1 and then channel 3. This is now being done to save bandwidth so that you can get all 14 channels to fit within the 100 MHz frequency band. This is where the problem starts as a result of this overlapping. In order for the router on the computer to communicate, tones are sent back and forth. This is just part of the communication. This is how it is done. And the data is superimposed on these tones. Now, what happens here, because these two channels are overlapped, it allows the other router to hear these tones as well. The router do not understand what the tones mean as channel one would understand what the tones mean and communicate back to the computer. The router here do not understand what the tones mean. It just hear these tones as noise. While the router is trying to communicate with its own local area network, this noise interrupt that communication. The router listens for the tones from the computer here, but unfortunately because of this noise, it doesn't hear some of the tones sent. So this router asks for resends from the computer. And if it didn't hear it the second time because of noise, it would ask for that resend again. These constant resends on this network here would slow it down. That is how you get slow Wi-Fi. And this problem would also occur with channel 1 as well. When there's communication between the computer and the router here, because the channel is overlapped, it also affects channel 1. So channel 1 will hear this noise as well. And it will slow this network down just like it's slow channel 2. So both of these routers will be slowing each other down as a result of this noise that is transferred from channel 1 to channel 2 and from channel 2 back to channel 1. Now when a third router comes online what you will notice here is that it's channel 3 
and channel 3 overlaps channel 2 and channel 1. So what is going to happen here is that channel 2 would generate noise just like channel 1 and 2 is generating noise. So the noise picked up by both of these routers will be much louder, further disrupting the network even more than it was disrupted before. And this wouldn't just be local to 1 and 2, it would also affect channel 3 as well. This noise from 1 and 2 be generated on channel 3, slowing channel 3's network as well. So all three routers will be slow. And as more routers come online, this problem would only get worse. This problem is referred to as adjacent channel interference. And this is the worst type of interference that you can get within a Wi-Fi network. It could slow down and totally paralyze the network depending on how many routers you got communicating in this way. This has been a problem for many years, especially in high density areas where there are a lot of routers like apartment buildings, which will result in very slow service on those routers. So it was discovered that using channel one, six or 11 will solve this problem. Now, why channel one, six or 11? It's because these channels are so far apart that there's no chance of them overlapping each other. Yes, people could still go ahead and use two, three, four, five, those channels, people that don't really know. Are you gonna find that? However, a lot of people are discovering this now and a lot of people are starting to use just one, six or 11. However, before you pick any one of these channels, you still wanna make sure that there aren't any routers that has picked a channel that is right beside your channel. Like if you're going to be picking channel one, you want to make sure that two and three, uh, maybe four aren't being used. Uh, you want to make sure that if you're picking six, you want to make sure that the channels before that, like four and five, uh, and also seven and eight aren't being used. And for um, channel 11, you want to make sure that nine and 10 aren't being used as well. Now for 12 and 13, these channels are only used in Europe and the rest of the world, and channel 14 is only used in Japan for the 802.11b standard. So if you are in North America, your router would just go up to channel 11. But it doesn't matter where you are, channel 1, 6, and 11 are the correct channels to pick in order to avoid adjacent channel interference. And to check to make sure there aren't any other channels working close to the channel that you're going to pick. You want to use a Wi-Fi frequency analyzer like NetSpot. NetSpot is what I use and NetSpot is free. You can download it from the internet and that will help you to be able to see what frequencies are in use before you pick your frequency for your router. Here's next start. I clicked on it, so here it is. So when this comes up, just click on continue. Okay, and it should be up. Okay, there we go. Um, so when you'll see these check marks in there, that's, they just sit there by default. I would uncheck all of them because those are not the routers I want to look at. Now the very first section here are the boxes that you would pick to look at a particular router. Uh, next is the SSID and these are the MAC addresses for the wireless device. These are the channels that different routers are on, like channel eight, channel six, and one, all the way down. Um, and then at the bottom here, we have more like the five gigahertz Wi-Fi routers. These are the 2.4s here, as, as you can see. This, in this column here, it gives you the bands, and these are the 2.4, these are the fives at the bottom. And this is just the security on the router and the, the, the vendor, the type of router, tells you all that information right here. And over here, it tells you the type of standards that this particular Wi-Fi um, router has built in. It will support G or N. And here is B, G, and N, and it goes all the way down the line. And right here, this is the levels. This is the level of signal that 
my router is seen from all of these other routers. My router is in the basement, so the level of signal that I'm seeing from other routers to my routers is very weak. So right now, um, I'm not getting much interference at all from other routers in, in the area. Um, this particular, these two routers are the same. One is the five gig, I want this one is the four. This is my router here, so it's the same router. That's why they both show green. Right. We were talking earlier about um, overlapping and how it causes um, adjacent channel interference. I'll show you a couple of channels that's, that are overlapping. Let's say we select um, this channel six here. Right, and, and then we select, um, let's say, uh, let's select 2.4, okay, channel 6. Um, and then we will select, um, let's say, is there another channel that's close by 6? Let's say 4. Okay, channel 6 and channel 4, they're both overlapping. So you're, you're going to get, um, with these two channels, you would probably get some sort of interference. However, because the signal is so low on this one, the difference in signal is so great. It's, once it's more than 20 dB difference, you're not going to get any um, problems with these two. They, I deliberately put my channel on channel 4 so that you could see exactly what the issues are. Like if say for instance this channel was much higher up here, my router would be extremely slow. So I would want to move this channel 4 from here. And I would probably want to go over here to say channel 11 over here um, because when you look at up here there's nothing else on channel 11 that's close by me this one has channel 11 but it's so far away from me it doesn't even register on the level meter nothing else up here there's nothing on channel um, 10 or 9 right so I would say that I would be pretty safe to go move that to channel 11 192.168.1.1 hit enter now I'm writing my router usually you have to put a password in but I've been into the router before so it remembers the password but usually you have to put a password in before you get into most of these routers well it's best to see that password anyway some people may not do it so I'll just click on wireless as I just did. Uh, once I click on wireless, I'm in here. Now, right here is my 2.4 uh, gigahertz router at the top. And at the bottom is the 5 gigahertz router. Now, right here is where you select this channel. Okay, and I'm on channel 4 right now. So I'm going to switch to channel 11. Okay, and just go apply. And just click yes. It basically, it's just telling you here that changing the wireless settings will disconnect all devices. I'm on wireless right now, so I will get disconnected automatically. So that's not a problem. I hit the router is applying changes, so I just click yes. So let's go ahead and do this. Usually, it takes about less than 30 seconds to get it all done. when it says retry you just leave it out alone that will um, clear in a minute just because I'm on wireless okay and there we go okay and it's all done now so I'll just click OK get out of there and I will just get out of here as well just get rid of that okay if you look at this I was on 4 before, if you remember that, and now I changed change to 11. Now there's nobody else around me, so I have the full bandwidth, I don't have any adjacent channel interference, and everything looks good. So this is basically all you have to do to switch from one channel to another. If this video has been helpful to you and you'd like to see more videos like this one, please don't forget to click on the subscribe button below so that you'll be alerted as soon as our new videos are released. My name is Trevor from Telecom Training. Thank you for watching.